So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the attack on Andy No in um, Portland uh, by members of Antifa. Um, I'm going to just uh, give a verbal description of what occurs in um, two videos that were shot of him being attacked and following on from that, uh, a discussion he had with uh, some members of um, Portland police and paramedics. So in the video that's been released of um, his attack, it starts off with him standing there um, in the crowd. He's got a camera in his right hand. And with his left hand, he's shielding his eyes. Presumably something had got into his eyes um, before the uh, uh, footage was um, started being taped. Um, so he clearly had something uh, thrown at his face or he's uh, reacting to something that has come at his face. Um, the video then shows uh, a member of Antifa coming in from his left side and slightly behind this person wearing black gloves punches No uh, twice in the head on the left side of uh, Andy No's head. Uh, no reacts to this again his head drops and he's still shielding his eyes at that point no takes a half turn to his left whereupon two more members of antifa come in from the right side slightly behind one has a can of what appears to be silly string and or um, some kind of um, whipped cream sprayer i think it's silly string but anyway start spraying um andy no around the head and uh, neck region. Somebody else throws a vessel at No. Uh, it contains some kind of um, runny yellow liquid. I mean, it's thought to have been a milkshake, but it seems a little bit too, uh, not thick enough, like the milkshakes that you get at McDonald's, Burger King, uh, other outlets. Um, so he has this first stuff thrown at him and he has this spray uh, aimed in his face. This seems to make No react even more around his eyes. It appears that uh, some of this um, silly string substance has got in his eyes. I mean, that's where the Antifa member is aiming for, aiming for primarily his head and face. No, at that point, begins to walk off to his left. Uh, um, surrounded by Antifa people, another person comes in, or another two people come in and kick him in the shins um, so he's received um, about four physical blows and um, two substances aimed at him no has by this time got a handkerchief in his left hand and he's holding it up to an area on his temple around about here which is uh, consistent with where the footage of the antifa person had punched no He's still being sprayed at this point on the other side. He's still got his camera in that hand and he's got a, um, uh, a handkerchief to his head there. His head is still slightly bowed and he's walking off. At this point, another two people come in from the right side. One more to the front. No, this is the only person to confront Andy No from the front of him. The other person comes in from the side. They hurl two milkshake-like substances there. Another guy at the back behind Andy No um, has a beverage cup in his hand, the kind of cup that would normally hold a milkshake. He hurls it at the back of no No's head um, and it lands um, on no the back of No's neck, just, just above the shoulder blades there. Um, what's interesting about that is that before throwing it, the member of Antifa holds it horizontally and before hurling it. Um, and then once it hits the back of Andy No's head, it bounces upwards and then uh, goes down a few feet further on from No. Um, this would seem to be that it's not just a milkshake. The, the What was in the cup does leave a white mark on the back, but unlike the other milkshakes, throwing it's not leaving a splatter. But it, it leaves a kind of solid white mark, but it does bounce clean up uh, off nose shoulders and lands a few feet further on. To me, and this is just speculation, it looks like something more solid 
was in that cup. Um, anyway, the footage ends with no kind of walking off, still with his head bowed, still with his hands up around his eyes. Um, he's covered in all kinds of gunk um, from the objects held at him. Later on, he is. Um, there's footage of him talking to members of the Portland police and paramedics. Although you don't see them in the shop, but they ask the routine questions. What happened, sir? And he says he was attacked and his GoPro was stolen. No, at this point, seems to be uh, in shock. As a, um, He's kind of uh, babbling, just saying the same things. I've been attacked. I've been attacked. They stole my GoPro. They stole my GoPro. Um, the authority, the, the police and paramedics say to him, uh, you, yes, sir, but you need treatment first. They obviously taking his injury seriously. What you can see on Andy Noe's face is that he's particularly red around the eyes. The, the, there's a lot of redness around there. He has a number of um, cuts and welts on his left cheek. Um, two on the cheekbone itself. Um, there, cuts and welts there. That's consistent with where the person uh, punched him the first time. The, he's got a, a very visible large bump on his left temple with what looks like a reddish purple um, blood clot just under the um, top layers of skin there. Again, this is consistent if you watch the footage of where that person hit him. On his right cheek, there's redness around the eyes. There's one welt just under the eye on the cheekbone. And, and um, even though a lot of the silly string has gone because that stuff is designed to kind of dry up and flake away, he's still got um, gunk on him that you can see from um, the various objects um, thrown at him. So I'm just telling you that that is just basic the bare bones. But let's go and talk into talk about some of the uh, theories that are going around and some of what Antifa apologists are saying. I will address what some members of the, the right have said as well. So the Portland police um, put out this message that they suspected that there was there were, there was reports that quick drying cement was mixed in with some of the milkshakes. Now, is this real or not? Because the Portland police didn't elaborate. They put out that message. Um, but it wasn't corroborated. Then um, that message was repeated a little bit later on, but n there's been no solid evidence, pardon the pun, of such a thing. Um, however, uh, Antifa apologists online have been saying that quick drying cement is impo it's impossible to get it to set if you have a sugary milk based drink like a, a milkshake. Um, this very well may be true. But I think it overlooks two things. Uh, one of the things that was being said about why quick drying cement was put into milkshakes is not because it's they want it to set and be a, a solid object, but that it uh, has chemicals in it that would provide some kind of skin irritant or uh, some some negative reaction when uh, mixed in with the liquid and uh, making contact with the skin. That very well may be true. Other substances can be used. Bleach, for example, could have been used. I mean, um, YouTube, please. That's not me condoning this. I'm just using examples of what might be mixed into drinks if you wanted to weaponize a milkshake even more than it has been done by members of the left already. Um, so, um, the, as for whether quick drying concrete or cement was used that's not been proven uh, one way or the other however it's unlike the antifa apologists i don't think it's beyond the realms of possibility um once you start throwing milkshakes with people if people still if the political opponents are still make their way in, in the united kingdom milkshaking uh politicians did not work uh, Nigel Farage and Carl Benjamin kept giving interviews and kept doing, uh, making speeches in front of groups. It did not impede them in any way. A milkshaking someone has not prevented somebody from carrying out their intended, um, uh, carrying out their intentions, carrying out what they uh, were intending to do. So milkshaking does not work except as a kind of um, publicity stunt. So if you really want to take the fight to your political opponents, um, 
I think it's inevitable that something will be added. Now, the other thing about this thing is that um, Antifa apologists are saying, well, it's impossible for uh, sugar, milk and concrete to, to set in that mixture. Uh, whereas I, I postulated back to them, well, why don't you just pour the milkshake out, give the cup a rinse and then put quick drying concrete and water in to make something that sets in an hour. You could do this in advance. It, it, it Because quick drying concrete and milk and sugar, it's impossible for it to set, doesn't mean that you can substitute one of those things, namely the milk, for water. There's nothing stopping that. There's nothing stopping um, an Antifa person swapping out the contents of a milkshake cup and replacing it with something else. This seemed to uh, befuddle people on the left. You know, the left have assigned that once you designate a cup as a milkshake cup, it can only ever be a milkshake cup. You know, drinking vessels can hold different things. Um, this is something that is somehow beyond, a concept beyond the left's understanding. So it's not that we can prove that quick drying concrete was used. We can't disprove it, but it is possible that other substances were in those cups other than just a commercially bought milkshake. Um, this is something that just needs to be investigated more. It doesn't, you know, it's not like this is the theory and this is how it must have been. This is a theory. Let's investigate. And that's the police's job. Okay, the other thing that uh, the Antifa apologists were saying was that Andy No uh, faked his injuries. There's photographs of No in hospital with all the facial uh, injuries on him, and they were saying that this was faked. However, I'm looking at the original footage of what was done to him, and then I'm looking at the video footage of him speaking to police and paramedics later. And the photographs that you see in hospital are consistent with the video footage of him being questioned um, by the police. So the, the photographic images and the, um, the video footage of him shortly after he was attacked and what we see in the original video of him being attacked, they're all consistent. He was hit in the head by an Antifa activist. Um, and where the bruises and the cuts and the welts are on his head, um, it is consistent with uh, what we see in the video. Where we see other injuries or, or other marks on him is again consistent with what we see in the original video footage of him being attacked. So this claim that it was faked, I believe is in turn fake. And I think what happened here is that a lot of the apologists are going to a few key um, pro Antifa websites who are putting out kind of like their press statement. And the apologists are kind of repeating the, um, the mantra. It's remarkably uh, similar um, the what the apologists say. It's almost um, the names change, but the, the text is often very much the same. Which is why you go back to the original evidence and you, you try and have a look at uh, what happened to, to discern what happened. So that's what I've done. I've not really been following um, third hand accounts of what has happened. I'm just looking at the video footage and and relating what I've seen. And in a couple of cases, I'm making uh, or I'm not really making claims, but I am pointing out some things that. Uh, seem inconsistent to me. Like the milkshake that is thrown at the back of No's head, it seems more solid than the other milkshakes that go in. The other milkshakes that go in and you get an instant splat. The cups pretty much fall straight to the to the ground and they are thrown kind of vertically. They're thrown more, more upright so the contents don't spill out. The guy who throws it at the back of No's head holds it sideways, horizontally hurls it and it bounces upwards when it hits no. So there is a white um, mark on the back of no's head. That could be something liquid, but I think something more solid than a milkshake was in that cup. And that's just basing it on what the physics that I see in the original footage. So what about the brain hemorrhage claim? So as um, one 
uh, tweet put out, and I think something followed up on, was that Andy No had a brain hemorrhage uh, resulting from the attack. Um, the uh, Antifa apologists say this is fake. He didn't. This didn't happen. Okay, so um, looking at that, first of all, if we look at the uh, video footage, Nose hit in the head a couple of times. Uh, and remember when I said about the, the lump with the blood clot there? Um, that's consistent with what you see in the footage. When Nose talking to the police, you can quite clearly see the lump with the blood clot. Um, and uh, I'm this isn't easy for me to say because uh, a few years ago I was mugged in the streets of London and beaten up. I received 17 uh, blows to the head. Um, and uh, I know what that's like, and I, I know how the um, the police and uh, medics react in these situations. I mean, they do ask you about about you know you've you received injuries. You know, they're, they're less interested in getting a statement than oh you've received head injuries that needs dealing with. Head injuries are really serious. I mean, this what I think this claim where no it, when people say it's all fake his injuries to his head. Um, they're getting their information mainly from TVs and movies. Uh, in movies, you hit people in the head and, and fights keep going. I mean, one of my favourite fight scenes in films is the one between Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy in 48 Hours. But that's not how a real fist fight would happen. You, once you clock somebody in the head, you disorient them. The, the, um, the, the trauma to the head is a lot more severe in real life than it is in um, movies and television programs um it only, you can you can effectively kill someone with one punch and it doesn't have to be the most powerful punch in the world um but it just has to connect in the right place and it it has it can cause internal bleeding um or a fracture a skull fracture and um, that skull fracture in turn causes internal bleeding it's a very serious matter being punched in the head um and so when they say it's a brain hemorrhage, I, I next found a report from the Wall Street Journal who described um, the uh, hemorrhage as a subarachnoid sub um, hemorrhage. Um, and it sounds serious. Brain hemorrhages are serious, but there's degrees of severity. They're not instantly lethal. They're always potentially lethal um, and they are serious and they are dangerous. Um, this was treated fairly simply and no was quite lucky in that regard but to say there was no brain hemorrhage at all i think is being disingenuous and dishonest um the, as i said you know you hit people in the head a, a brain hemorrhage even a small one is is as um, a very likely outcome of being hit in the head so and it's consistent with what we see you know that that lump on his head with the blood clot it's very um, highly likely that he suffered a brain hemorrhage. I'm, I'm guessing the Wall Street Journal, which is a little bit more reputable than a lot of other papers, if they're saying it's a subarachnoid hemorrhage, that's a very technical term. And that's a technical term you would get if you had questioned uh, the hospital where he was being treated. You know, that's the kind of statement they would give out. Um, what, what's Mr. No in hospital being treated for? And they would release that. It's a very technical term, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Um, and now we come to the issue of uh, the other thing the anti-fire policy said, well, he's a fascist. Now, and he was there, he was also there provoking violence, inciting violence. Well, let's go back to the video footage again. Now, I don't know what I don't know that much about Andy No. I mean, I, I I hear things from people I'm kind of politically in line with, and they they sing his praises. But I'm also aware of what his most vehement critics say that he's a fascist. Um, but I'm I'm not here to talk about his past work. But from what watching the video, he is standing there. He's got a, a small camera in one hand, his GoPro. And he's filming the event. There's a initially there's a, a circle around him. He's not talking to anyone. He's not giving speeches. He's not hurling abuse at anyone. He's not doing anything physically threatening. He's there standing there on his own 
with a GoPro camera filming. And then people start attacking him. Once he starts being attacked, his head drops, his hands go up to cover his face. He's attacked more times. He's punched in the head. He's kicked in the shins. He's having gunk aimed at him. He turns, still shielding his eyes, now putting a handkerchief up to the um, place where he's received the bump on his head. And he's just trying to walk off. OK, this is not the actions of a violent man inciting a riot. This is the actions of a man who is hoping he will survive this encounter and trying to get away from it. And as I said, I am a victim of a physical attack in, a, in city streets. And you, you can, you, if you chat enough, you fight back. And I, that's what I did. I, I tried fighting back immediately. But when I realised I had three attackers on me, and once I realised I could not win, the other instinct kicks. Now, I couldn't escape either because um, after the first couple of blows, I was down on the ground. So you go, hands over the head as much as possible, right? I basically did that, mainly to come to protect my eyes because uh, I wear glasses. Um, so I, I covered my head and I recognised what Andy No was doing. Down, cover the head. You know, hope you just get away, get away with as much of you intact as possible. And that's what I see there. I don't see a, a fascist agitator there. What he writes in his columns and what he does in his videos and his professional life, you can criticise as much as you like. But the idea that he was there, his presence was inciting violence. And then that in turn gave the excuse to use violence back at him, I think is entirely false um, and incorrect that is it's it's unjustifiable in my opinion and uh, Antifa as far as I'm concerned they deserve their domestic terrorist status um, they should be uh, um, arrested and charged uh, by the police now people will say oh they're just milkshakes okay Right, you're still arrested and charged, and you, you could caution those guys. The guy's throwing milkshakes, the guy with the silly string can. Although the guy with the silly string can is aiming for his face. So um, a legal team could put point out that he was intending to maim Andy No to his actions. They're all of them. Everybody who did something to Andy No in that video is guilty of assault. About eight of them are guilty of assault and battery. And certainly the people... The main person who hit No in the head twice and the other people um, uh, kicking him in the shins, they are the priority to arrest. That you, because those ones, um, it's um, assault and battery, the intention of causing serious physical harm, particularly the guy that punched him in the head. Now, what happens now for Andy No? Now, I don't know if he'll ever watch this video um i know people who know him uh, down a chain but if andy ever does watch this video or if any of his friends are watching this video i would offer this advice and this is from someone who's received head trauma um in a violent confrontation and that is don't don't, don't think that after two three days you're going to be fine again you might feel fine for uh, a little bit but um head injury um, takes a lot longer to recover from. And somewhere down the line, maybe days, weeks, months, something will happen and you just will stop thinking for a moment. This is what happened to me um, within two, three days after my mugging, when the cuts and bruises started to heal, I tried to go back to work and it was a disaster. Um, my short-term memory was affected for nearly three years, actually. Um, and... Um, it's it wasn't an easy time because I found it difficult to to hold down jobs and I was working in a very competitive industry uh, where the slightest weakness or failure on your part was just dealt with um, very harshly and so it was very difficult for me to advance in my career at that stage for about um, three years because of the short term memory loss I started having to make copious notes um, I had to go to cognitive behavioural therapy because there, there are times when you go and meet you you go and arrange to meet people 
somewhere, you know, for the in the evening and you're in a public place in a big city. And I would have panic attacks if they were slightly late um, because I hated standing out in the open in public. You know, I just wanted to, every time somebody said, let's meet up somewhere, I go, OK, let, let's go to a restaurant or go to a pub or go to a coffee shop. But I am not waiting on out in the street for you outside a venue for you to turn up. Uh, and people thought I was a bit weird for making all these demands if I was going to meet people. And I know people who are always habitually late. They say, we'll meet you at 7.30. And they never turn up till about 8 o'clock at least. And that would freak me out and I'd have panic attacks. I remember somebody coming and um, intervening. <laughs> uh, somebody got, just gave me a bottle of water because I, I was hyperventilating um, outside Tottenham Court Road tube station one evening. So there's my advice. Seek help, you know, get your cuts and bruises. If Andy ever watches this, get your cuts and bruises sorted out, the medical side. But also, um, you need to be aware that you could have head trauma and the symptoms and side effects. Um, this isn't psychosomatic, by the way. This is what happens when you know, your head is hit hard. OK, this is what happens. It's a, it's a form of brain damage. Some of it can be very temporary, but you are, when you get uh, head trauma, you are disoriented uh, and it's not psychosomatic. Physical things actually happen to your brain. Get help. The best help, the one that got me out of this is a treatment called EMDR, which kind of desensitizes you. So you have to replay the incident over and over and over in your head until you are desensitized to what happened to you. So you can just look at that more objectively. And I would say, you know, if Andy ever watches it, that's what you need to to do you know i um, strongly recommend do not let what's happened to you go untreated don't try and bounce back in and say i'm absolutely fine to the world and nobody give andy grief over this either you know nobody said well you shouldn't have been there in the first place that doesn't help me he needs to come to terms that what has happened has happened whether he played a part in his own assault or whether he is a completely innocent victim that doesn't matter. The, what is important is absolutely desensitizing yourself to what has happened to you. So you can, the, the healing process within the mind can go along with your physical healing. And on that note, I will see you later on in the week.